Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. I'm so excited that you have tuned in today, and I want you to know this is one of the most important things for you to give your attention to in your life right now. I'm Michelle Steele, and and with me is my friend, Annette Capps, and we've been talking over the last few weeks in this program about her new book, The Spirit of Prophecy, and I think when we when we come to a place where we are uh, hungry for God, uh, we will experience God in a way that, that he is so willing to express himself, so willing to meet us. I want to share with you from the prologue of her book. This is the chapter called The Encounter, the prologue of the book called The Encounter. As the double doors of the church entryway opened, congregation members were met with a mess or a miracle, depending on their point of view. Disheveled, crying, and shouting preteens and teenagers were all over the sanctuary. One was dancing the dance of the spirit between the pews with eyes closed, and many were speaking with tongues. A girl my age was in the middle of the sanctuary on the left side, near the pew where my great-grandmother always sat. She was lying prostrate on the floor with eyes closed, spinning like a top. Under the control of the Spirit, she navigated up and down the rows of pews, spinning parallel to the floor. I cannot explain how she did that and finally quit trying. You could never say she was spinning in her own ability. From what I saw, it was physically impossible for her to do what she did. Parents and church members gathered in the pews at the back of the church. They sat wide-eyed and speechless. Parents had received phone calls at midnight from their sobbing children, and they desperately tried to find out what happened. The only thing they could gather was that Jesus was at the church. I'm not certain, but I think they were frightened. (laughs) With each adult who entered the sanctuary, the presence of God decreased in intensity. It was as if part of the Spirit left every time the back door opened. When when you talk about this experience and you go on to revisit it in the first chapter of the book and you explain that the presence of God came in, not like the gentle movement of a dove, but with a blast of God's power. And this manifestation of God was not something that was momentary. It was not something that was just uh, a a quick, uh, um, this was over a period of what, four hours that the the power of God manifested in a youth group prayer meeting. We've talked about it in an earlier broadcast, but I want to go back. For those of you who are just tuning in and maybe you missed the earlier broadcast, this is an experience that happened to you when you were 14. And it was an experience among other experiences that you share in your book that helped you to learn how the Holy Spirit moves and prepared you for the plan of God that that is being played out in your life even today. I want to allow you just to go with us back to that moment and and where we're we're identifying for those who are watching us today the value and the importance of the presence of God and how he wants to minister through us. Take us back to that moment and talk to me about how the Holy Spirit spoke to you through that or spoke through you at that meeting? Well, I'm I'm trying to sort of regain my composure because when I listen to you read, I am back there at that moment. Yes. 
and I am experiencing the power of God and the, the, what took place in that meeting, it was, I, I, like I said, it's easier to experience than it is to express because how do you, how would you explain the upper room experience in Pentecost? You know, it said a sound, a sound from heaven came as a mighty tempest blast and filled the place where they were sitting. Yes. And they were all filled with the Spirit and began to speak with tongues. And that, that experience that we read about in Acts chapter 2 is actually is the closest thing I can compare to what happened to us on that, that night because we were just praying, you know. We were just praying, seeking God because we we wanted people to be saved. We were praying for revival. We were just pouring out our hearts to the Lord when it was just literally an explosion of the Holy Spirit. I mean, I, I don't specifically remember a sound. It's almost, it's almost, excuse me, it's almost like I felt it just an, an, just an explosion in the atmosphere and the power of God hit us and the presence of the Holy Spirit was so real in that moment, more real to me than anything I'd ever experienced in my life. Um, the manifestations that the adults saw at that time, they, ju they just saw us doing the stuff. They didn't see what happened in our hearts. Right. Something took place on the inside of us in our hearts. And there were kids that were born again, spoke in tongues, filled with the Spirit, slain in the Spirit. But the important thing, you know, I mean, the manifestations of the Spirit, it's like you read that girl that was, I mean, there, there was dancing in the Spirit. It wasn't like, oh, the hallelujah hop. I mean, this person was just under the control of the Spirit going through the, with the eyes closed through the pews, just under the complete control of the Spirit. And the girl that was spinning like a top, I have to agree, that's an unusual manifestation but there was, it's just impossible. She was spinning like this on the floor over and over and over going through the pews back and forth. And we didn't, we weren't caught up in the manifestation. We were caught up in the spirit of what God had done in our hearts. And that's why we had such joy. We were praising God. We were speaking in tongues. We were dancing. We were shouting. And the first thing that happens when you get full of God, because you want to share that with somebody else. Yes. So since we were having revival at the church, we some of the kids, when they they went to call their parents, they wanted them to come to the church. and and But when they picked up the phone, they were just speaking in tongues. They couldn't even talk in English. And so the parents grabbed the fact that their kid had, had gone to prayer meeting, so some of them just came because they knew that's where their kid was. Some of them, all they could say in English was, Jesus is here, come to the church, because they wanted everybody to experience what we had experienced. It wasn't a sideshow. The manifestations of the Spirit that were happening were unusual and powerful, but that wasn't why we wanted people to come to the church. We wanted people to come because we wanted them to experience the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit. We wanted them to experience in their heart yes, what just happened to us. And yet, like you, you read, every time the back door of the church opened, it's like part of the Spirit left because it was curiosity. You know, what's going on here? It was fear. What's wrong with these kids? It was who knows what else it was. But every time someone came in, it's like what was happening in the Spirit just started dying down. And, you know, Paul said, Grieve not the Spirit, whereby you're sealed to the day of redemption. And I really think one of the reasons that we don't see manifestations of the Spirit like that is because we so grieve the Holy Spirit. I mean, he's, he hasn't been in control of our services, you know. And I'm not saying that that has to happen to every service. I, I'm not saying that at all. Um, but as we've talked, 
you can sense the Holy Spirit is wanting to move and minister. The Holy Spirit is so wanting to touch people. The Holy Spirit is so wanting to touch you. The Holy Spirit is so wanting to move in your church as pastors. The Holy Spirit so wants to minister to you, minister to your people. He wants to flow in healings of every kind. And yet, we don't give place to the Holy Spirit. You know, the Bible tells us don't give place to the devil, and somehow we got that mixed up and thought we were supposed to give place to the Holy Spirit. But having manifestations of the Spirit means we must be hungry for the Spirit. We must be hungry for God. Yeah. Not just, oh, let's pray so we can get signs, wonders, and miracles. We weren't seeking signs and wonders and miracles. My sister and I were five and eight, and the pastor's daughter 13. We went out in that bean field. You know, we weren't seeking for some manifestation when the power of God, the you know, like a wind and a fire came over us, baptized us in the Holy Spirit. We weren't seeking manifestations. We were seeking God. We were hungry for Him. And so in that incident, it really showed me, you talk about learning to flow in the Spirit, it showed me that the Holy Spirit can be easily grieved. If He doesn't go where He's not wanted. If your, church, if your church doesn't want the Holy Spirit and that speaking in tongues and healings and manifestations, He's not going to come. It's not that God doesn't love you. It's not that uh, it's not a doctrinal thing. It's just the Holy Spirit goes where He's wanted, where He's appreciated, where your heart's open to Him. And so on the day of Pentecost, where we read about Peter and the apostles that were gathered in Acts chapter 2, it says they were praying. They were praying and gathered together. They were fellowshipping. What, what can, can you imagine? Jesus, the Savior, the Messiah, has just been crucified. He's, he's just been taken up in heaven. They thought he was going to stay here and he was going to do certain things politically. And it didn't happen. And so they're praying because Jesus said, you've got to stay there until the day of Pentecost. I want you to stay in the upper room. And they were waiting for a fulfillment of the time. And on that day, the promise, you see, the Holy Spirit is a spirit of promise. Jesus promised the Holy Spirit. God the Father promised that the Holy Spirit would come to be with us. And so it was the day in which the promised gift was given. That that we experience, that was a gift of the Holy Spirit. It was a gift from God to have God so fill your heart that you you couldn't you couldn't speak in English because you're so full of God's love and God's Spirit. To have the Holy Spirit so powerfully come down upon you that. Your body can't be still. It has to go with the flow of the Spirit and dance. And just, I, you know, when you read it, I know I got choked up, and I'm, I'm not the type that does that, but I can't help it. It was such a, a, a deeply spiritual experience. And the, the manifestations are amazing. The manifestations of the Spirit, healing, deliverance, casting out devils, uh, Miracles, signs, and wonders of what Jesus did, multiplying, um, multiplying the fish and the bread. Those, those are amazing miracles. But if, I bet if you talk to the apostles, what would be the most amazing experience? It would be when the Spirit of God himself descended on the day of Pentecost and came into their heart. It was a mind-bending experience, but it was a heart expanding experience yeah and no matter where you know you come from what church whatever I I'm not going to preach a doctrine to you but I'm going to preach what the Spirit of God can do for you and in you when you're filled with the Holy Spirit um, Jesus said you know from out of your innermost being would flow rivers of living water, life-giving water. Yeah. Living water, not dead stuff. The flow of the Spirit is a live, living stream. It's not dammed up somewhere that some denomination has, has a 
hold on it, bottled up, this is ours. No, it, it, it's a flow. You know, I'm reminded of Moses when God said, I will go before you. And Moses said, if you don't go, I ain't going. But I think some of us have missed that sometimes. Religiously, we've said, well, we got it. Last time, the Spirit of God moved in our church. We've got it. They don't, you know. But you can't decide that you have all of what the Spirit has because you, the Spirit is constantly unfolding, constantly unveiling, constantly revealing God to people. Yes. And that's something that doesn't take place in the intellect. It takes place in the spirit of man, in the heart. And there's no person that is left out where we say, well, that, that was an apostle. That was prophet so-and-so. That was pastor so-and-so. Of course, he's going to have an experience with God. No, no. The Holy Spirit is available to every person that opens their heart, every person that's hungry for him, every person that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, every person that calls upon the Holy Spirit to fill them with the presence of God himself will be filled, filled and filled to overflowing. So that experience that we talked about, that's just a beginning experience. The experience on the day of Pentecost wasn't the end all. No. You saw, you saw what happened to Peter and the apostles, that from that time forward they went forth in the power of the Spirit. Yes. And God wants to unleash that power of the Spirit in every believer's life, that they go forth and speak the words of power. Speak under the inspiration of the Spirit, which is the spirit of prophecy. Speak God's word to every situation that is opposed to what God's will is here on earth. And we know what God's will is. On earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. And we have the power to do that. One of the most amazing things that God ever showed me was Ezekiel chapter 37. You, you may have read it where... God spoke and said, Son of man, can these bones live? Um, I don't know. What do you mean, dead bones? Can they? Seriously? <laughs> Seriously? You want me to prophesy to dead bones? And yet that's what God said to Ezekiel. Can these bones? Oh, I don't know, Lord. You know that. He said, prophesy to these bones. Prophesy to these bones. Prophesy to these bones. On that day in the 1960s when God anointed me, I got up and I prophesied under the power of the Spirit for 45 minutes. But I had no idea what was to come, that he would call upon me to prophesy to cities, prophesy to nations, prophesy. How, how does that happen? Well, the Spirit of God said, I want you to prophesy like Ezekiel prophesied to the bones, the dead, dry bones. Prophesy. You know, so it's like, wow, okay. And then it happened. I was in Salt Lake City, and the Spirit of God spoke to me. I was standing up on the balcony, up in the upper stories of this hotel room, on the balcony, overlooking the lights of the city. And he said, prophesy to this city. But the Spirit of God spoke to me, prophesy to the city. <laughs> I didn't understand. Do you want me to go to uh, rent a, a, a meeting room at a, a Civic Center hotel, have a meeting and prophesy? Prophesy to the city. Prophesy. Well, how do you prophesy when there's nobody there to hear? And I learned one of the most important lessons in my life. Prophesying doesn't mean somebody has to hear it. Because prophecy is a fire of the Spirit that ignites the words, that takes it forth into the realm of the Spirit, into the atmosphere of this earth, and it affects a change in the place. And so God spoke to me, prophesy to this city. And I began to prophesy to the, to the city of Salt Lake City while I was standing on that balcony overlooking that city. I began to prophesy to it. Hear the word of the Lord. Be moved and be changed by the Spirit of God. I don't remember all the words, but it began to come forth, and it came forth, and it came forth. I'm like, now what? I say, oh, you're a woman of faith, right? 
you believe the word of the Lord, you believe what God said, yes, I believe what God said, then you prophesy those words and you let them lie where they've been sent. You send those seeds forth. You send those words forth in the power of the Spirit. You go, wow, and that, that's amazing that God called you to do that. Oh, but God has called not only me, but God has called every one of you filled with the Spirit to send forth words of prophetic words over cities and nations and over your family and over circumstances and over situations in the spirit of prophecy. You prophesy by what? Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. And then let the spirit of God ignite the words that you speak in your own understanding to affect changes in everything around you, changes in your household, changes in the life of your loved ones, changes in your church, changes in your city, changes in your state. This is what God wants. I prayed about the anointing in this book because there was a powerful, as I was trying to edit this, the power of the Spirit came upon me so powerfully. I had a hard time editing the English and working on it. But this is what God wants in this hour. He is wanting to anoint his people. And his people are those who are seeking to know him, seeking to know his presence, seeking to know his power, seeking to know his love, and seeking to be truly anointed in this hour. We are in that day. We're in that time, Michelle. We are. And we don't have any more time to sit around going, well, I didn't know. I didn't know because God's revealed what he wants. I don't think it is by chance that God chose a ministry who is so impactful to bring the power of words, the importance of, of speaking the word of God. And usually we put that in with the written word of God, but that God brought this to you and you know, I, I wanted you to go back and talk about that experience because in those experiences, God was preparing. He was, he was preparing you. And like you said, it wasn't the end. It was the beginning. Mm -hmm. And you've been a, a, um, a diligent uh, carrier of the word of God, not just in a way from the written word, to, to hold that fast, but also the prophetic word, this, the words spoken out of your spirit by the inspiration of God. And um, you said, I want to read this from chapter nine. You said, you may not be called to the office of the fivefold ministry, but you may be called to step under the anointing of another in support and help. When everyone in the body finds their proper function and finds the grace and anointing to flow in the spirit, we will see the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Yeah. We need every member of the body of Christ to step up to whatever God's called them to do. Yes. And whatever God calls you to do, God will empower you and he will give you the grace to do it. That doesn't mean everybody's called to a fivefold ministry, but everybody's called to something. Everybody's called to something. And God doesn't call you to something that you can't do because it is not by might nor by power, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord. By the Spirit. If we learn to walk in the Spirit, so many of us have, I don't know, we've tried to do things in our own power. We've tried to figure God out. We've tried to figure the revival out. We've tried to figure out how God's going to do this and how God's going to We've tried to figure out how we can best accomplish um, our ministry or what God wants us to do. And it's not in the intellectual realm. It's, it's by your spirit. It's through the Holy Spirit. And I've been you know, I've been guilty of this myself. The Lord tells me to do something and so I go to do it. You know, okay, God, you want me to do it, then I'm going to go do it. And man, I tell you, I get, you get frustrated. You know, it's like, I'm trying to do this right. I'm trying to accomplish this. And 
And you have to sit back and go, what's wrong? What's wrong? And then it's like, okay, I'm just asking you to move forward. I'm not asking you to accomplish it. The end results are with God. You just simply walk in the power of the Spirit. Praise God. Walk in the power of the Spirit. This book, The Spirit of Prophecy, is a life changer because you will come away from this book not only with a hunger to flow with the Spirit of God, but with a foundation of the Word of God to make sure that you are effective for the plan and the purpose of God. I encourage you today, stay tuned to find out how you can get your copy. How do we define the prophetic? Well, the prophetic takes many different forms which communicate the mind and the purpose of God. It's erroneous to think that all prophecy begins with a loud, Thus saith the Lord. <laughs> when I was first began to prophesy, I spoke words of comfort in a Bible study by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And as I developed in this, God anointed me to prophesy in the Spirit over cities and nations. And then there were times I recognized a low-key, quiet manifestation of this gift while speaking with someone or praying. Well, this book will help you develop the gifts of the Spirit in your life. Call 877-396-9400. It's offered 2532, $16 plus shipping and handling, or go to caps.tv. I also want to offer you the three prophetic messages that were given to me to prepare the church for what was to take place in the following year. At the time, these messages were helpful to the church, but I did not recognize the full significance until we were in the midst of the next year. These messages are still valid for strengthening believers in what we are now facing. Now, I put all three of these messages on a USB flash drive for $22. It's offered 2023. It's a good deal. Three messages. Call 877-396-9400 or go to caps.tv. The three messages are God's third choice, what to do when things don't turn out as expected, and then supernatural encounters, that is preparing for the next great outpouring of the Spirit, and escaping gravity, how to break fit free of heaviness when your world is shaking. Please specify whether you want audio or video. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.